up speaking español con mi papá y inglés con mi mamá. I grew up bilingually, speaking Spanish with my dad and English with my mom. And for one year, my life was perfect. And then, on the day that I turned one year old, my life was no longer perfect. My mom and dad gave me the worst birthday gift you can give to a one-year-old boy. What's a good birthday gift to give to a one-year-old boy? What do you think? A lollipop is a good birthday gift for a one-year-old boy. What's another bit, good bit? A what? A PS4 didn't exist when I was younger. <laughs> but that's a good gift. What's another good gift for a one-year-old boy? Yeah. A phone. <laughs> well, they existed, but not the kind of phone you think. My mom and dad got my birthday gifts at the hospital. What birthday gifts did they get? Not just one little brother. Two little brothers. My mom and dad had twins on the day that I turned one. And when my mom and dad came home from the hospital, mi mamá tenía un hermano en sus brazos. My dad had the other brother in his hands, and nobody was holding me. I looked up at my mom holding my little brother. I was only one. I said, eh. I looked up at my dad holding my other little brother. And I realized that nobody saw. Uh, uh. 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 My mom saw that I was jealous. Ella puso su hermanito allí en la cuna. She put her little baby into the crib y me agarró a mí. She picked me up. And when I was in my mother's arms, I was ah. And my other brother in my dad's arms, he was but now little Robertico, little Robert in the crib, he looked up at my dad holding the other twin. And my mom holding me. Mi mamá y mi papá estaban riendo, they were laughing. My dad put his twin in the crib and picked up little Robertico. And little Robert in my dad's arms was, and I was in my mom's arms. Ah, and my little brother, Henriquito, in the crib, he looked up at my dad holding little Robert. Ah, at my mom holding me. Ah, and he... <laughs> he slept all the time. Well, finally, when my brothers got old enough, they started to speak Spanish, like my dad and I, and English, like my mom and I, and then we began to fight. How many of you could write or tell a story about a time you got in a fight with a brother or a sister? How many of you could write a story about a time they got you in trouble for something they did? How about you got them in trouble for something you did? My brothers and I, we began to fight so much that my dad got on the phone. He called my abuela, his mother, my grandmother. He said, abuela, los tres niños están peleando. The three boys are fighting. Y Robertico está llorando. Enriquito está llorando. Antonio está llorando. Mamá está llorando. Y yo también. <laughs> Ayúdanos, abuela. Help us, grandmother. And my grandmother got into a plane, flew to our house. And when she walked into our house and she saw the three boys fighting, she reached into her huge apron pocket. She took out a great big wooden spoon. She said, Ven acá. When we saw that spoon, we started to laugh, and she used that spoon to make a great big pot of beans <laughs> and some rice, and we had a great big meal. Y ahora había tres adultos y tres niños. There was three adults and three children, and so we didn't fight as much. Mi abuela empezó a decirnos muchísimos cuentos. She began to tell us all kinds of stories. How many of you have a grandmother or grandfather that tells you really good stories? How many of you have a grandmother or grandfather that tells you slightly scary stories? How many of you have a grandmother or grandfather who's just a little bit weird? How many of you have an, a relative who sing you songs? How many of you tell them they tell you bedtime stories? How many of you are the one who likes to sing songs yourself? How many of you like to tell stories yourself? Mi abuela también nos dio nuestros apodos. She gave us all nicknames. My brother's name is Roberto, but she called him 
Pintico. My brother's name is Henrique, but she called him Mayimbe, and she called me Papito. That was my nickname when I was younger. On my very first day of kindergarten, when I was five years old, I woke up my mom and dad at 5.30 in the morning. I said, hey, wake up, I'm going to school. My dad said, papito, vaya a dormir, es tan temprano. It's so early. My brothers were still asleep. I woke them up. I said, hey, you're not going to school but me. I'm going to school, going to school, going to school. I got my backpack on, I got my little lunchbox. I looked at the clock, 5.45 a.m. School was never going to get here. I played some games, I read my, a book, I cleaned my room, I looked at the clock, 5.46 a.m. Oh, finally it was time to go to school and my dad walked me down the street. I was so small when I was in kindergarten, I had to reach up and grab his hand. And I was walking down the street, I got to my school building, I said, adios papa. Mi papa me dijo, adios papito. He called me by the nickname my grandmother called me. Adios papito, I'll see you after school. Okay papa. I walked into the school building all by myself. At first I wasn't scared, but then I saw the first graders, oh, and the second graders, ah, and the third graders, and the fourth graders, and the fifth graders, and the teachers, ah! I cried on my first day of school. I cried on my first day of school every year until I graduated college. <laughs> I cry going to work, but that's a whole different story. When I got to my classroom and walked into those, and I saw those kids, I was so excited, I forgot to speak in English. I said, hola, como están? Yo me llamo papito. Those kids looked at me, they said, what? Hola, me llamo papito. And one kid in the back said, what's he saying, Mrs. Green? My teacher said, honey, nobody speaks Spanish. Here at this library, and in Pasadena, and in Los Angeles, a lot of people speak Spanish. But when I was younger, as a kid, in my school, nobody spoke Spanish. My teacher said, honey, nobody speaks Spanish here. Well, that's okay, I speak English too. You're bilingual, that's wonderful. I said, hi everyone, my name is Papito. And one boy in the back tried to say it, but he couldn't say it like my grandmother. He said, pa, papito? No, 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 papito. He said, oh, papito. Papito, he said, sounds like Dorito. <laughs> I went home, I said, I talked to my dad in Spanish. If you don't understand, I'll translate, but I think you'll figure out. I said, Papa, ahora yo no quiero el nombre Papito. ¿Por qué no? Esto es tu nombre que te dio tu abuela. No, porque hay un muchacho en la escuela que me dijo, me dijo Dorito. Y otro que me dijo Nacho Cheesehead. Y otro que me dijo pa Potato. Ahora yo me llamo un nombre más americano. Ahora yo me llamo Tony. Mi papá dijo, Tony? No, papá, Tony. Tony. Oh. I told my dad I didn't want the Cuban nickname that my grandmother gave me. I wanted a more American sounding nickname and I wanted to be called Tony. But my, my dad couldn't pronounce Tony very well. I had a Cuban nickname the kids at school couldn't pronounce an American nickname that my dad couldn't pronounce. I was only five years old and I was already culturally confused. My dad dropped me off at school the next day. He said, adios papito, uh, Tony, te veo más tarde. Okay, papa, adios. And one of the kids heard my dad and I speaking Spanish, a big third grader. To me, he looked like a giant. He came up to me, he said, hey, yeah? What was that you were speaking? Spanish, Spanish, duh. He went and told some of the kids on the playground that because I spoke Spanish, I wasn't as smart as he was. I went home and I did something that I wish I didn't do, but I did it. I said, Papa, ahora no quiero hablar español. I don't ever want to speak Spanish again. And if my dad spoke to me in Spanish, I'd answer him back in English. And after a while, if he spoke to me in Spanish, I pretended like I didn't understand him until after a while, he only spoke to me in English. And since I wasn't practicing my Spanish, what do you think happened to my ability to speak Spanish? I forgot it. And when I got older, I couldn't speak with my grandmother anymore. And she got so mad. She told my dad if I wasn't going to speak Spanish with him, I was going to speak Spanish with her. The next thing I know, I was flying down to my grandmother's house in Miami, Florida. And when I walked into her house and she saw that I couldn't speak Spanish, she reached into her huge apron pocket. She took out that great big wooden spoon. She said, 
Benaka. And she used that spoon to make a great big pot of beans. And we ate those beans, and she sent me to the library, and she made me get books in Spanish. And what do you think I did with those? I studied and studied and studied and studied and studied and studied and studied. And then we would watch telenovelas. We'd watch soap operas together. And I would try to figure out what was going on. And then she told me some stories that she told me when I was a little boy. And one of the stories she told me became my very first children's picture book.